day. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. We rejoice because we are glad in it. We thank God for this being Mother's Day. We give honor to all of the mothers in the name of Jesus Christ. Give honor to the mother of this assembly. She doesn't have the formal title, but she is the mother of the church nonetheless. Amen. Give honor to Lady Graham and thank God for her unwavering support and commitment. Let's give her a hand in Jesus' name. We thank God for her. Amen. Thank God for all of the other spiritual mothers in the house. Give honor to Mother Mother Lou, Mother Miller. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's give her a hand. Amen. She is spiritual mother. I take nothing but granted when it comes to our spiritual mothers because if nobody knows how to get a prayer to through, mamas do. And so we thank God for her. Thank God for my mother being in the house today. Mother Brown, Melissa Brown. She's been a wonderful, brilliant, and magnificent example for me in my life. And so I have no excuse in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank God for all of you that are here in the name of the Lord. So hopefully if you're not a mother, and if you're not a woman, you won't go to sleep today. Because the word has something for all of us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll look very briefly at two passages of scripture. The first coming from 2 Corinthians chapter number, uh, we're going to go to chapter number 11. And then after 2 Corinthians, we're going to go to Genesis chapter number 3. Praise him. Amen. So um, 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, we will just read verse number 3 as Paul is writing about false apostles and prophets in this text. But then he makes a reference to someone that we will learn from today on this Mother's Day. Verse number three says, but I am afraid, Paul says, that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So what did this serpent do? Genesis chapter number three, the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field. And the Lord God, that the Lord God had made. And the serpent said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, and neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. Then they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the cool of the garden. That word translated as raha, that means wind. We learned that the spirit a few weeks ago. And the man and his wife, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called the man and said, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. I was afraid, Adam said, because I was naked, so I hid myself. God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, yeah, but, but this woman that you gave me, God, you gave her to be with me. She gave this fruit of the tree, and I ate it. The Lord said to the woman, what is it that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. You created the serpent, and I ate it. 
the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock, the beast of the field. On your belly shall you go. The dust shall you eat the days of your life. And I will put enmity and enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That's Jesus they're talking about. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband and he shall rule over you. And to Adam, he said, because you listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of that tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain shall you eat all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until, the, until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust. And to dust you shall return. The man, man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living things. Eve means life giver. And when you see the next word, Eve was the mother of all living things. Yeah. Mother refers to physical and biological connections, mm. literally. And mother in this text refers to emotional and spiritual connections figuratively. Another definition of this word mother is indicated in the Hebrew as a bond of the family. The mother serves as somewhat of a dam. If you think of a water, it keeps some water in and keeps some things out. So before I go on, I, I want to acknowledge that this Mother's Day, there are continuums of motherhood. And some days make it sad and some others are happy. But I want to acknowledge that some of us may have experienced neglect, abandonment, or abuse at the hands of your mother. We want you to know that we acknowledge your experience. Some of us may have lost a child or a mother recently or in times past and know that you're not alone on this day. You have people that are standing with you. Some of us have experienced or are single mothers juggling a plethora of roles and responsibilities that seem to never end. I want you to know that we celebrate you today. To those who have disappointment and heartache and headache and even distance between you and your mother or you and your child, we again are here with you and for you. Yes, Lord. And of course, to all of those who have close relationships with their mother, we celebrate with you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Eve was the first of many firsts. She gets a, a, a bad rap, and perhaps rightfully so, because, you know, she ate, and she gave to her husband, and her husband ate. But I want to take a moment to, to, to just relieve a little bit of the pressure on her. She was the first woman, the first mother. She didn't have any type of support to know what she was doing. But then some argue she had God. But the point is, she was the mother of all humanity. And despite the social engineering of race, ethnicity, and other divisive subcategories, we all come from Adam and Eve. Yeah. In fact, the History Channel, the same people that do Ancestry.com, they traced the whole lineage of mankind back to a mitochondrial beings that lived in the northern continent of Africa. Now, of course, science can't say that was Adam and Eve, but we know that as yes, Adam yes, and Eve. Yes. Zondervan, in his commentary from 1988, writes that Eve was a mother of distinction. Mm. And despite the horrible choice that she made and the horrible choice that Adam made, that we credit to them this sinful state that you and I were born in today. We want to give her a little break and take a few moments just 
to learn about some of her positive attributes today. See, there's many experiences and attributes that she has that no one else will ever have but our mothers share in. First, she was the first woman, obviously, to live on the earth. She was the first woman to be called a wife and a mother. Quite possibly, Eve was the finest woman to have ever lived the face of the earth before October 8th, 1977. That's my wife's birthday. Think about that because she was created and shaped in the hands of a perfect God in his perfect image. So she had to reflect divine perfection. I hope she's in heaven because I want to see you. I hope I get to see what she looks like. She had to be good looking. We read here that she was the first fashion, how do you see, a fashion designer. (laughs) She was the first person to sew sew clothes together and make something fashionable. Get this, saints. She was the first and only woman born without sin. She came directly from the hand of God and out of her husband. She was also the first person, this is powerful, this knocked me off my socks. She was the first person to hear God's redemptive plan of salvation from sin through Jesus Christ. So when you hear about her seed bruising the serpent's head, that's Jesus Christ. So even in her fallen state, God was still giving her a plan of redemption before we were here. Sadly, Eve was the first to engage in spiritual battle with the devil. She was the first to technically rebel against God. And that's what we want to learn. God told me three things to give to you. We want to talk a little bit today about uh, being a mother of distinction and that's what Eve was a mother of distinction and here we see that the enemy's desire is to ruin families his desire is to destroy them he has spent decades trying and in some way successfully deprogramming males If you look around, there's typically more females in churches than males. There's typically more females in families than males. He's tried to deprogram, and he's successfully nowadays trying to redefine what manhood is. And now that he feels that he pretty much has that under control, his attention has shifted to women and motherhood. He's shifted to motherhood because he knows that if he can ruin that dam, that that life that is is blocking and preserving many things of our world, he knows that he has us right where he wants us. But I thank God for mothers of distinction. Now the Spirit told me on Tuesday to give you three things that the enemy's trying to do to all mothers. And technically he's trying to do it to everyone. You need to know that the enemy has never stopped Since Genesis, he's never stopped trying to destroy families. He's never stopped trying to destroy the church. And if you are a mother of distinction, he's trying to destroy you. You say, well, preacher, this is Mother's Day. I want to hear something hopeful. This is hopeful. But he's trying to destroy you, but he can't destroy you. Because the Bible says we can't be ignorant of his devices. The devil never stopped. Do you think he punches a clock on Mother's Day and says, let me let me let her have a happy day? No, he continuously tries to bring you down. That's why I thank God for some of you because you, you're still here despite what you have gone through. And you may not be a mother of distinction, but as you go through the storm, you become what's called a woman of distinction. And then when you have a child and you grow, you become a mother of distinction. You do not skip from being a skank to a mother of distinction. You have to be a woman of distinction before you can be a mother of distinction. And so what is this strategy? Very quickly, it's a, it's a three-pronged strategy. 
The first thing is when we're overwhelmed, mothers, and when we're discouraged, and when we're disgruntled and unhappy, and in some areas even maybe justifiably so because of the, the balls that life has thrown at you. This isolates us. And it causes us to, to push ourselves over psychologically to feel that no one else is in our position and we're all alone. And, and these times is when the enemy slides in to ask us questions that causes us to speculate. Yeah. And so once we get in a position where it's isolation, the enemy causes us to question things that creates what's called speculation. Yeah. So Eve was off somewhere. Perhaps Adam was there. Perhaps he wasn't. But the enemy presented Eve with a question that was speculative that caused her to give a response because she did not fully know and have in her heart exactly what God said. Right, right. And so after this speculation, yeah. it shows the enemy that there's room for him to slide in. Because when the enemy approached Jesus, Jesus didn't get into a speculative dialogue with Satan. He just said, Deuteronomy said, get thee behind me. Yes, Deuteronomy said, man shall not live by bread alone. Do he, just, he just told him what the Bible said. Yes. And the enemy left. If, if Jesus would have answered or had some questions or said, I think the Bible. You can't just think you know the word. You have to know the word. Right, and so when this, this isolation comes and then this satanic speculation takes root, this leads to separation. And my pastor always teaches that separation is not always a, a physical death necessarily, but it's a barrier or a breach between you and your relationship with God. Amen. And so when this mother of distinction engaged in isolation and when she engaged in speculation about what God said, it created a separation between her and her perfect God. This shows us that no matter how good we are, there's always room for error. Yes. That if we give just a slither to the enemy, that's enough for him to come in. Yes. But thanks be to God that gives every mother the victory yes. through Christ Jesus. And ultimately, we're told in the scripture that when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is conceived, it brings forth death. The enemy wants to annihilate every single mother. And he began before you were even thinking about motherhood. The trauma that you've gone through. That it was deposited in your life that you have to feel like you have to wrestle with. That's there by the enemy, the serpent, the same serpent that showed up in the garden, showed up when you came out of the womb to try to destroy you being a mother of distinction. But my Bible says that my heel is going to be able to bruise the serpent's head. No matter what environment we come from, no matter what type of parent we had or did not have, if God be for you, there's nothing that can be against you. You have the power to lift up your spiritual foot and put it on the enemy's head and say, I will be a good mother. I, I will be a good wife. I, I will be a good husband. I will be a good father. I I will be distinct because my God is distinctive. And so mothers, I just want to encourage you to, to keep on mothering. Don't stop because your family needs you. Your society needs you. The world needs motherhood. The church needs mothers of distinction. God, think about this, saints. God revealed his messianic prophecy to a mother, a woman, before the foundation of us being even thought about. So everyone needs you. You are a woman of distinction. You are a life giver. No one else can give life but a mother. No one else, hallelujah, can nurture but a mother. Yeah, yeah. See, this dam is constructed to hold water back. But that's not the only thing dams do. 
dams raise the level higher. And so when the water can't go where it wants to go, when I pour it in the glass, what happens if it can't spread wide, it goes high. And see, mothers are used to lift up standards in society. Mothers are used to lift up Jesus Christ in society. Mothers are used, hallelujah, to cause there to be a difference between the world and the church, between good and evil, between nonsense and no nonsense. Don't you let the enemy define for you what motherhood is. When I turn on the TV I see motherhood means I have to have a certain figure and my hair has to be a certain length and I, I have to be a certain complexion I hear what these folks say the 40 is the new 20 the 50 is the new 30 the 60 is the new 40 listen don't you be ashamed of what your age is because the Bible says aged women have wisdom I should be able to know the difference between my daughter of my wife and my grandmother they shouldn't all be wearing the same outfit their cleavage should not be showing hallelujah if they're twinning it's because they're wearing the same color not because their breasts are hanging out and their buttocks are hanging out they're supposed to be a difference when I'm a biblical mother of distinction you don't believe me I don't have time to preach it but you turn to Titus 2 and read on your own. We don't want to hear about it because the world tells us, listen, I don't have any problem with women working. That's not my business. My mother was a single mother that worked full time, but she also knew how to clean a house. She also knew how to cook. She also knew how to teach me how to wash clothes and how to do the dishes myself. Don't mean any harm. My wife worked and had a good job making good money, but she knows how to do those things too. Yeah. I've never had to go hungry. Why? Because Titus 2 says you have to be a keeper of the house. I know the 21st centuries don't want to hear that, but that's Bible. And that's where I get my distinction from. Peter says the ornaments are not just in what you put on, but a meek spirit. Hallelujah. My wife can get what she wants out of me. Hallelujah. By being meek in her spirit. Hallelujah. You see, when you do things God's way, it makes it work out the way it should work out. The world will tell you you have to do it the way the television promotes now. Listen, listen, listen. A mother of distinction is what the world needs to produce better young people, to produce stronger men, to produce stronger women, to produce well-roundedness. That's why you go through some of the things in your body and some of the things in your mind because you are a mother of distinction. God chose you to have the privilege to be a life giver. When we had our children and we went through that Lamont class, my mind was blown how something the size of a Coke bottle gonna let out something the size of a watermelon. I was tripping about how God does the anatomy thing. How does the baby know how and when to twist his head to do gymnastics in the womb to come out the right way. How does God do that? I don't understand it. But mama, you a life giver. And when you birth that child, the life keeps flowing out of you. Hallelujah. And even to the adopted mothers, you got a life flowing out of you. Because it's an instinct that God has put in every woman when you respect Bond to your calling of womanhood and motherhood. Don't let the devil annihilate you and isolate you to feel that you got to drop it like it's hot and shake it like your, your mama gave it to you. No, you can dress modest and still get the man. You can live holy and still get a 
ring on it. You don't have to play Beyonce to get a ring on it. You gotta play Jesus Christ and you can get a ring on it. And if you don't get a ring by spring, you can still shout the victory because Jehovah Shammah is my companion. Jehovah Shammah is my way maker. Jehovah Shammah comforts me when I'm alone because I I'm a woman of distinction. So charm, the scripture says, is deceitful. Mm -hmm. The garden talked about that. So charm is deceitful. You know, flattering lips and, and you know all that swag and all that kind of stuff it has its place. But that can be deceiving. If you don't believe that, take a look in Judges and talk about Samson and Delilah. Amen. And beauty is vain. I tell you all the time. I thank God that I used to have a six pack, but I can't see it no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you, she may be a Coke bottle now, but later on, if she keeps on living, it'll look like a gallon of milk. It may be a nice plump grape, but it could be a prune pretty soon. You know, that's just life when you stand before God. And you even want to forget this. See, when you stand before that's God hard. at this altar, all I'm thinking thinking about is the honeymoon. All I'm thinking about is the house that we have. All I'm, I'm thinking about the good things. But that preacher says for better, and that's all I can see right now. But there's two words that come after that, or worse. In sickness and in health. I hate to say it, but anything can happen anytime to anyone. But when we have this Bible here, we realize that charm is deceitful. We realize that beauty Beauty is vain. But how many know on, that there's a on. but? But that means it cancels all those things out. Right. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. A mother that fears the Lord is to be uh, praised. But this fear refers to a really literally afraid to do something that's not the will of God. I thank God because I used to hear Bishop Motri talk about Mother Motri and how she just was straight up and down. She didn't want to watch TV and she was just living holy. And I used to laugh at that. But now I find my wife, she fears, she's afraid to do some things. And I give God the praise for that. She's afraid to go some places. So when you see that fear in this context, it's literal. A mother should be afraid, hallelujah, to disrespect her husband or her child. Afraid to do something other than God's way. Afraid to not live up to the Proverbs 31 mother. You gotta be afraid to not fulfill the will of God. But you have reverent morality. And that's what the world is attacking. Attacking the mother's morality. Makes you feel bad if you work if you have kids. Makes you feel bad if you stay home if you have kids. You seem to not be able to win sometime. But thanks be to God Hallelujah. that gives us the victory Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus. Because mothers of distinction, you may be battered, you may be bruised, but I got news for you. You're still a winner. Now unto him that's Jesus, that is able to keep you from falling. Ain't he gonna keep you? I got some single mothers that know what it means to be kept. I got some mothers that had the backside and came back that know what it means to be kept. I got some foster kids in here that know what it means to be kept. He's able to keep you from falling. And I have news for you. Some of y'all women who are scared because of the mistakes you made. This is the Holy Ghost. Listen, repent of your sin and God won't hold that against you in motherhood. And if you've already repented, say, Lord, bless my womb. Lord, bless my hands. Nothing the enemy has deposited in your life is supposed to keep you from being a mother of distinction. I don't care if you're 70. God will redeem the time. You crowd upon it. And the child you haven't heard from in 20 years will call you to say happy Mother's Day. God is a healer. He's 
He's a way maker. He's a provider. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy isolate you into thinking that we distinct motherhood. I can't be like Mother Miller. You don't know what Mother Miller been through. No, you don't want to be like her. You want to go farther than her. So get everything she got and keep it stepping. We all stand on the shoulders of somebody that came before us, which means we should see longer and see higher and see farther so there's no excuse unto them that are in Christ Jesus you are a mother of distinction you can be a mother of distinction no matter what the enemy says you keep on being a mother you keep on giving life and I'm going to give you another note there the spirit said you know how you give life with your mouth stop tearing down your kids hallelujah some of y'all just came in this is for you Stop tearing down your kids. Uh, speaking negative uh, and speaking hateful. Uh, speech upon them. Uh, the Bible says uh, don't provoke your kids uh, to anger and to wrath. Uh, don't say ignorant things. Uh, even if they were said to you, uh, you are a life giver. Uh, speak life uh, whether you see it or not. Uh, don't you speak death. Uh, don't you tell your child uh, you're better off dead. Uh, I wish you wasn't born. You're going to jail anyhow. Don't you say that. Even if it looks like that. Don't you say it. You are a life giver. Mothers, you got power in your mouth. Speak it over your family. Speak it over your future. Speak it over the community. Speak it over the church. Mothers, we need you. They try to silence the mothers. You're too old. You're old fashioned. Hallelujah. The world says, listen, they're trying to turn back the hands of time. You don't need to be 60 acting like the new 40. We need your wisdom. We need what you've gone through. I need some help and how to get through some of the things that I'm faced with. No, things may not be the same. But listen, Solomon tells us there's nothing new under the sun. No, the serpent is it's sliding to us, but he's coming through our TVs. Same speculative type of questioning. No, we may not be dealing and battling with angels, but I'm battling with my mind. The same result. God wants life, and the enemy wants death, and we're in the middle. But if we choose you this day, who we will serve, hallelujah, then life belongs to me. Life belongs to me. Life belongs to me. And I'm glad that I not only have natural life, but Jesus Christ gave me spiritual life. Anybody glad that I have spiritual life? Because I hear Psalm 27. That's in our Father's Day. Even if my father forsakes me, and on Mother's Day, even if my mother forsakes me, the writer of Psalm 27 said, The Lord will bear me up. Hallelujah. Anybody ever been bared up by the Lord? It looks like what I feel like. I can't go on. Somehow, I keep putting one foot in front of the other on a cold rainy day in May when I don't have a mind to go to church. But I hear it's church time. I tell my flesh, come on flesh, put something on. Squeeze into something and put one foot in front of the other and make your way. Sometimes I'm in the sanctuary and I know I'm supposed to move. I know I'm supposed to rejoice. And I gotta cry myself about the sheet and put one foot in front of the other. Sometimes I don't know where the meal's gonna come from, but I gotta put one foot in front of the other. So mother, be distinct. Put one foot in front of the other and press and press and press and press and press to be a mother of distinction. The prize of the high calling of God in Jesus. In Jesus. In Jesus. We appreciate you. Thank you Lord. We love you.
peace in God's economy. We just heard he revealed himself to Eve. He gave wisdom. When you read the book of Proverbs, wisdom is written like it's a woman. We read a little while ago when God chose that Jesus chose to have a dialogue. When he came back, he had a dialogue with a woman. This is not discrediting. Man, this just happens to be Mother's Day. You get your props there. But this is to show you that you are valued. The biggest lie, one of the biggest lies, is that you are under men. If you live holy and live righteous, then you have to be subject. You know, we all subject ourselves to Jesus Christ. The issue is not who we subject ourselves to as much as if we're in alignment. I've never met a woman who has a problem subjecting herself to a man if the man's in alignment with God. Come on. The issue is not Talk God. The it. issue is the alignment in God. Yeah. It's all right. That's always what it is. So the world will tell you all these young people, you're going to get all these mixed signals and all this stuff. You hide this Bible in your heart. Thank you. Come to Sunday school. Memorize what you need to memorize. Do what you need to do to get that word so you yes. can yes. be a person of distinction. Don't feel bad. You keep doing what God would have you to do because the world needs you. And if the enemy can suppress the mother's voice, we're all in trouble. And if the enemy can convert a life-giving spirit to a death-giving spirit, we're in trouble. 90 plus percent of the inmates that are in jail today were told by someone, and some of them, their mothers, they would go to jail. Don't speak self-fulfilling prophecies, mothers, into your life or your family's life or your kids. Think it, maybe feel it, but don't you say it. Don't you tell your kids what they can't do. Tell them what they can't do. Don't you beat them down to the extent where they feel like they're nobody less than second-guessing themselves, don't know which way to go. And some of us were raised like that, but you have to break that mold through the power of Jesus Christ. That's the importance of the church. Some of us were raised in abnormal environments that we think are normal, and then when you go into a normal environment, you think that's abnormal. The Bible is the calibrator of us all. There's always something in our spirit, our life, our heart that needs to line up with the Bible. And when it's revealed to me, I don't have to go searching, being a spiritual hound dog. I don't have to do all that trying to find the sin. The Bible, the word will reveal to me what I need to work on. And the Spirit just told me that someone you speak in negative on your kid, stop it. Don't you stop your kid. If you're going to discipline them, discipline them. But don't open that. You're so dumb. Pie out. That's, that, that's crazy. Don't do that. If you need help with godly, biblical, um, what do you call that? Corporal, corporal discipline. We'll sh- I'll show you what that is. The Bible says a fool's back's call for strokes. The reason why our buttocks are so cushiony is not just for seating. Because that's a place where you can tag up. I know some of y'all going to run out, call DSS, whatever. Yes, run out, then tag it up, and you'll be all right. It's true. Amen. But not the face. Amen. Not the face, not the throat. Jab in the throat. Ugh. Can't breathe. That's crazy. Not with clothes hangers and extension cords. Bible says, arrah. Come on. That's a mother of distinction. And the Bible says, ooh. This is Mother's Day. The Bible says, if I don't discipline my child, I don't love them. It's his word. That's his word. You can listen to Dr. Spock all you want. His kid or grandkid killed themselves. Yes. Speak, Lord. I want to listen to somebody whose kids are in the church. Come on, come on. I want to listen to somebody whose kids are not on crack. Uh, uh, excuse me, the, 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 uh, the addiction. Because now crack was a, a war on drugs. Now, opioids is a sickness. So whatever you want to label it, you know, whatever it is, no, no, no. We want to line up with people who are godly, who did it, right? And may have made some mistakes, but you learn from those mistakes. That's a mother of distinction. Don't tell me how to raise my kid if your kid's a jailbird. Don't tell me that unless you're telling me what you would have done differently. But if you find someone in this house who has maybe made some mistakes, but has got it right, that's 
a person to follow or who has made some mistakes and it's not right, but they learn from them. Some of the best lessons come from people that have failure. Amen. I, li I listen to men in churches who have failed marriages because they show me what not to do. I don't thumb my nose about it and say I'm better than them. God can't use anybody. If you use a donkey, why can't he use them? But the key is being a mother of distinction. And where is that found? Fearing the Lord. Let us stand, Lord. We thank you for this grace. Thank you for your mercy.